Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and we're just taking a look at some of our prospects here, here in the early parts of the season, but they've had enough time to get a decent look at their stats and what they're going to project to be. So Michael Worth was the first guy we want to look at. He was that 18-year-old left-hander we acquired in the offseason, um, I believe from, I don't know, I don't remember, but Michael Worth, uh, 74 overall as an 18 year old C potential and that's probably why they were so willing to give him up C potential isn't really that great but still look at his ratings here so I mean he has 91 break 83 velocity 86 stamina he's four and three on the season what really makes him a good pitcher is his running fastball they call it the sinker baller here as a player quirk so um, let's just look at the stats on that thing so that thing let's see go to pitching so here he has a pretty fast slider here but his curveball is fast as well but his running fastball look at this 91 break 86 control 83 velocity i can't wait to use him once he does get up to the, ma the major league level um who else we have reggie flowers who's an interesting prospect uh he's 73 overall c potential um right now he's one and two on the year on at the double a level but our top prospect here, Geronimo Reyes, uh, he's like the number two or three prospect in baseball right now. Uh, 19 years old, 71 overall, A potential. He's going to be a problem when he's up at the majors. He has no player quirks right now. But look at him. His rates are going up. Ratings are going up. Um, 3 4 4 ERA. Let's just look at the rest of our pitching prospects. I mean, we have Kyle Funkhauser, who's a 24 year old. And he's four, he's has a 4.26 ERA, he's three and two at the Triple A level. Um, but besides him, we have wow, I don't know if we we have Phil Bigford, who's uh, in our, in real life, he's a pretty good prospect. Um, but besides that, we don't really have too many other pitching prospects. Did I miss anybody? I don't think so. I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it um we don't really have any minor league prospects we did draft this guy joel escobedo um he's decent i mean maybe one day he'll get up i mean he's deep potential uh he's actually pitching pretty good out of the bullpen um but not much there um let's look at our catching prospects jacob nottingham is our number one catching prospect uh he was acquired in the lucroy trade and you know he has decent ratings uh I mean, his fielding's probably got to get up a little bit. Uh, he's got decent arm strength. Not that good, but um, maybe he'll have a big season. He's hitting, what, 255 right now at the AA level. Um, no other catching prospects there. Uh, Garrett Cooper was our lone catching prospect. Uh, Jesus Aguilar is actually at the MLB level in real life. Um He's hitting really good, actually. He's hitting really good at the AAA level. 324. Um, he's got that flame symbol, meaning he's on fire. Uh, we don't really have any second base prospects. Dilson Herrera is there. Uh, who's he, I mean, he's decent. Um, Russell Hopper was that guy we acquired in free agency. 19 years old. He's a beast at the play. Look at those attributes. But look, he's declining a little bit. And I think it's because of his performance. Uh, let's look. Oh, he doesn't have the player morale because he's not at the MLB level, but looks like he's declining a little bit. Hmm, that's kind of worrisome because I was looking for this guy to progress instead of decline. Uh, I mean, look at his stats, though. He's a beast. But Lucas Erceg, uh, he's a beast as well. He's hitting 245 right now at the AAA level. I was looking for him to make, have a big season so maybe he can move up. But, you know, Travis Shaw is doing pretty well right now. He's hitting 291. Uh, Orlando Arcia, uh, he's hitting 166. He's struggling on the year. Um, but I still have hope in him. I still, you know, he's getting better. So, um, no really, you know, dominant middle infielding prospects there. Um, but once we get to the outfield here, uh, we have John Taylor, who is that guy we drafted, I believe, in the second round. He was available. Uh, he's got decent speed. He's going to get better there. Um, his hitting's pretty good for a, you know, a first year player here. 21 out of Oregon, eight potential, 65 overall. He's hitting 230. Um, 11 stolen bases, which is a good sign. He can swipe bags. 
Um, does he? Have, yeah, he has that player quirk to steal. Um, here in center field, so we have Brett Phillips. Let's just start at Bo Boog Powell. So I don't know where this guy came from, but uh, he's actually pretty decent. If you look at his stats, he's not bad. He has decent speed. Um, he's hitting 269 at AAA. Brett Phillips is hitting 238 at double-A. I was hoping he would do a little better, but he's not really producing there. Corey Ray is only hitting 193, and he's one of our top prospects in our system. Um, the one thing that looks good about him is his speed, uh, his base running ability, uh, and he has decent fielding, 73, which is a lot better than a lot of guys in the game. I mean, look at Keon Broxton is 74. It's only one above him, and Lewis Brinson's actually 65, lower than him. So, uh... You know, Lewis Burns is only hitting 231 on the year. Keon Broxton in that platoon role is hitting 286. Uh, Franklin Gutierrez, I mean, we don't really have that many. So let's just get into this gameplay. I just want to give you guys a look at the prospects that we have. Going up against the Nationals, we're at Miller Park. They're 25-22. and 22. We're 29-19. Doing pretty good to start this year. We got Zach Davies on the mound again. 4-2 and two record, 4-1-5 ERA. And here in the first inning, he's getting Trey Turner to strike out swinging at a pitch in the dirt. Good way to start that game with the leadoff hitter. And Bryce Harper comes up and we get him to ground out. We start off the game pretty nice. But Jake Arrieta is on the mound for the Nats. Remember, he signed there in the offseason. And then the Cubs signed Yu Darvish in his place. So he's on the Nationals now. And VR leads off the game. Jonathan VR comes up to lead off the game versus our former foe in Jake Arietta. And we take the one nothing lead. That felt good to hit that one. So here, Eric Thames is grounding out, and Trey Turner gets hurt diving after that ball. So they're forced to bring in Alan Cordoba as a sub. And, you know, that's unfortunate because Trey Turner is actually so good in this game. I mean, he hits the ball well. He plays good defense. But anyway, back to the game here. Lewis Brinson starts out the second with a hit to the right center gap. Travis Shaw moves him over to third, so we got a guy on third with one out, and Jet Bandy does exactly what I want him to do on that. I swung at a ball, but that's what I was meaning to do. Just hit a grounder in play. And Zach Davies is on the mound, and he's dealing. You know, he's pitching a pretty good game up until this point. He gives up a big fly to Anthony Rendon and he leaves it right over the middle I wasn't even aiming it there but he I guess you have a bad pitch now and then so here Orlando RC is actually having a pretty good game in the seventh inning a pass ball moves him to second base and Jake Arietta, I'm trying to bunt and he beans the pitcher Zach Davies so Dusty Baker says that's enough. Let's bring in a new guy. They bring in Austin Adams to try to get him out here. And VR hits a liner to the left center gap. And, you know, I'm tagging up. I'm moving to the third. So we got guys on the corners. But here we cannot get anything done. Ryan Braun with the line shot to right field. Not deep enough. But here in the eighth inning... With two outs, the, the Nationals are on a little bit of a roll here. So I had to bring, on, bring in Corey Knable. And right away, the first battery face hits a ground ball to Thames. And Thames just botches it. He just doesn't get in front of it. So I actually walked Bryce Harper here. And I didn't even realize that Daniel Murphy was on deck behind him. So he delivers. Daniel Murphy is clutch, especially in the playoffs. So it's no surprise that he came through. But Corey Knebel does pull it together, and he gets Rendon to strike out. But here in the ninth, Jet Bandy's leading off the inning, and he gets a hit to the left side to start out the inning. So we got a guy on first, and Orlando Arcia is staying hot. I think he went four for four this game. I'm not sure, three for four or something like that. He had a really good game. 
and here is a long play. They overthrow third, and then the catcher tries to throw to second, and the catcher, the second baseman bobbles it. So I bring in J.J. Hardy for the pinch hit, and he hits a deep fly ball, and that's going to be deep enough to bring the run home. So we do tie the game up in the ninth. And here I get VR up, and he's been having a good game as well, but he can't do anything here, and neither can Eric Thames. So we're going to extra innings, and Ryan Braun in the 10th. You know not to hang a curveball to Ryan Braun. He gets a hit to the left side. Franklin Gutierrez actually has, like, one of the worst games I've played with him. He goes one for five on the game. Travis Shaw can't bring him in, so... We're going to go to the 11th now, and Garrett Cooper comes in to pinch hit. And VR comes up again and pops it up to center field. And we cannot get anything done. So we're moving on to the top of the 12th here. Taylor Youngman is actually pitching a really good game in relief late in the game. But here he walks the f a batter with two outs. But luckily he doesn't get all of this pitch. He pops it up to center field, close to the warning track. So we're on to the bottom of the 12th here. Eric Thames grounds out. So we got Ryan Braun coming up to the plate, looking for him to deliver here in the 12th inning. And here's the pitch. Ryan Braun. The trade rumors are going around once again this season, and he delivers once again. You know, moments like these just, like, make me question whether to trade him or not, and I don't know. <laughs> it, it's hard to trade a guy who's been in your organization for so long, has done so much, but that scandal just rubbed me the wrong way. I can't even lie. But he comes through clutch in this game. A low pitch there, and he golfs it out of the park. And, man, this is a good sight to see. The Brewers are streaking here a little bit. We're beating the Nationals. Hit subscribe. See you next time.